Hello, this is Eric of Not Bio Studio, and today I'm reviewing the Ceremonic Blink 500 Pro X. And the X version is supposed to be a modified, improved version of the non X. Silica. And we have quality insurance, stickers, looks like a warranty thingy, and a user manual, which is fairly detailed, it looks by the pictures. And there we go, in a couple languages. We also have a carrying bag. Actually quite a nice one at that too. And inside that bag was a bunch of adapters. We have our USB-C right there, and USB-A stereo cable, as in these two lines you see, left and right channel on both sides. And we also have our phone cable. We can see our three lines, which normally connects to the phone side, and we have the two stereo lines our wind muff for our speaker microphone here which has those little clips on the bottom but we'll see how this attaches to see if it attaches securely or not and of course test outside we also have our included wired lavalier and the star of the show is right here this is a charging case which means it is a slow charge but of course that means it should at least maintain your batteries more we also have a battery level indicator by pressing the button right here and we can open it with a press of a button and we are presented with our microphones. We have little foam pads on the top to avoid scratching here and you can see the little charging lights. Right here we have our receiver, we have our volume controls it looks like as well as a set button, our charging port if you want to charge it separately and we have a line out and a headphone monitor on the side. You can see where the charging connections are right here on the device itself. And we have our nice humble clip for our belts. Now once we finally got our little peel thing ready, we can just like so. Really shiny since it's not fingerprinted yet. Here is our microphone and on the top we can see right here for our built-in mic and right here is our lavalier port. We also all have our humble belt clip, our case charging port right here, and we also have a mute button on our microphone side to mute it as we see fit. And we have our lovely peel right here. You can see where it attaches and our clip right here, which is kind of difficult to attach, but let's try attaching it in front of the camera if I can. So let's get the hole lined up. Well, that's hard with the light in my face. There we go. So I kind of had to move it down towards me so I could see better, but it does hold pretty snug. It's a lot longer of barbs versus the Rode Wireless Go 1. So are we going to lose it? Probably not. Oh, and it looks like we got some peel on our charging connectors. That means I can't charge my device yet. Lovely. There we go. You can see our pins right there for charging. And let's see how this goes. And now we can see our microphones charging now that we removed that pill from the back of the device. When it comes to mounting the Ceremonic on the camera, we have plenty of room. So there's no problem there, unlike the DJI connection. And it does go on very tightly like the DJI connection does. And for sliding off, we will pretty much have to use our two fingers because this does clip on very tight to the camera. A lot of hold. So if you have it on a belt clip or somewhere else mounted, it is gonna hold quite secure. And this entire time while mounting this, you've been listening to the Ceremonic. How am I coming through? The menus, because you see the screen's on all the time, but that's out of the package setting. We can change that. So what we do is hold the plus button right here. And by the way, you're actually hearing the microphone right now as I'm speaking to you right now. But uh, yeah, now I'm at the menu and we can see the menu right here and I can't see it because my screen's too small. So this is our gain level we see. And this takes us to our next menu, which is version, firmware version. And then I have a pair, yes or no. You can restore to, I guess, factory default settings. And then let's see, we have language. Backlight mode, this is one I want to change because we see it's on all the time. 
Now what I do is I hold that plus button down, the same one I held down to get to this menu, and then it selects it. You can see it's highlighted right there. And now from here, I can actually press the plus button again, and we can change our settings. I want to change mine to 30 seconds. Sure. Now I'm going to hold the button again, unselect it, and hopefully I can figure out how to get out of this menu. Okay, I press the minus button once I unselect my menu, and now we're back. So this should allow me to change back to my default setting and the screen dim after 30 seconds of use. So this will be useful to save battery life. And we can do the same part with our monitor. So if you really want to save your battery life, this is an option for you. And uh, right now I'm doing a battery life test with the lights on. But at this point, I'm going to show how it is when the lights are off. Just so you can see. But the one disadvantage here is now, how do we know our microphone's on? We don't know, except for looking at our waveforms. Until, of course, we press our button. And that'll light up for 30 seconds. We also have the mute key. Um, we also have this mic input mode. Interesting. Let's see what's on there. Mic in. Line in. Okay, interesting. Now, one thing I want to point out is we have a mute button on the side here. And let's see how well that works. It's unmuted again. So we have a mute button also on a receiver end, just like so. And again, I can unmute it. And of course, the main point is to see if there's any click sound or anything, or if it just goes silent and then goes back on. And if you're like me, it's kind of easy to mute your microphone, which I happen to do while I was actually showing this microphone and had to cut out that scene. So let's go back to my settings. And let's see what I'm on. Ah, key, mute key enabled. So I hold that button down. And then I'm going to select it off. There we go. Mute key disabled. Now I'm going to unselect it by holding the plus button for a moment. And then momentarily press my minus key to exit the menu out. And now let's see what happens when I press my mute key that's right here because it should not mute whatsoever. See, it's not muting. Now the one thing that's deceiving about the mute key, so look right there. And now we don't see a line, so that's all you see when it's muted. Very, very hard to see. You can change it so one microphone itself goes through both left and right channel, but if we change it to stereo, it's going to be either left or right channel for your auto. So if I go into here, let's see if we can see this right now so we can actually hear that. So now we are in stereo mode. I should be, oh, I shouldn't be, but it is. Let's see if I exit the menu, and if we go mono now, uh, there we are. So once I get out of the menu, it's now one speaker. Okay, let's go back and we're gonna go back to mono. And once I get on my menu that's unhighlighted, we are now mono. And that's how that works. Testing mic one, two, three. 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 And how am I coming through? How am I coming through? And let's again test with the firm off on. The firm off is now on. Let's do a mic test. Mic test one, two, three. 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 Mic test. 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 And how am I coming through? Use the microphone with a little furry thing on. I believe it actually does help. In terms of self noise for this particular mic system, I turn the volume down and up both in the receiver and the microphone and either way, it is quite similar. So let's listen to the silence. Okay. Self noise seems to be much more affected by the lavalier versus the built in mic. And right now I have this Ceremonic at 4 out of 6 using the included Ceremonic microphone and my Sony ZV-1 at 6 out of 30. Let's listen to that silence just for a moment. We are listening to the wire lavalier included with this Ceremonic device. How am I coming through? 
Now, one thing you might want to know is how it sounds in different locations. Mic test, one, two, three. 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 How am I coming through using the included lavalier? The included wired lavalier with this device, the one concern is this is metal, this clip, but here it is made of plastic, which means you could end up breaking it if you're ejecting out this device here because it holds on very, very tightly and you have to use quite a bit of force. Now, if you're looking for a lavalier to use with this, you're looking for one with high sensitivity because it doesn't work as well in terms of hiss with microphones that require high sensitivity, such as the LV2, the Sennheiser MKE Essential. They both require a lot of gain, which means a lot of hiss is introduced. However, as we're going to hear momentarily, is the LV1 works excellent with this, but you have to leave a gap. And the Rode Lavalier 2 also works excellent with this device. Now let's hear those. Right now you're listening to the X5 LV2. It's a miniature microphone and right now it's actually hidden in my shirt because it's one that's very, very small and is great for hiding on your talent or actor. We're now listening with the X5 LV1. There is a small gap that we need to leave. And this again is similar to the DJI mic, but of course there's no locking part on this particular microphone. How am I coming through? And this particular microphone is the same one right here that I use for Extreme the Movie Episode 4 on my Not Bios Tech and Reviews channel. If you want to see something cool, check that out. Right now I'm using the Rode Lavalier 2 with the locking mechanism in, and the DJI mic would not even work with this part connected. However, let's disconnect that because we might get better sound. We are now listening to the Rode Lavalier 2 without the locking part connected, so it is direct. How am I coming through? And that's one thing I love about the Rode Lavalier 2 and hopefully this is coming through super clear because this is a super good lavalier. The audio we're hearing right now is using the headphone out port and I can definitely tell there is some self noise. The headphone out port is definitely louder than the line out. So there's that. It is time to do a quick audio test to PC showing you Ceremonic's website. And this will give you an idea of how audio sounds when ran through the PC. I am now using the included lavalier with a Ceremonic device using the SR-C2001 adapter. However, if I use the phone cable using a sound card, the sound is really not good. Right now you're hearing the audio from the included lavalier from Ceremonic using the phone adapter. The audio you're hearing right now is using the Ceremonic SR-C2003 cable. I am speaking through the microphone with the little furry thing on and I use an adapter to make this type C to type A and I'm using the regular camera cable, yes the auxiliary TRS cable, not the smartphone one and connecting it directly to my line out connector on my receiver. The audio you're hearing right now is overlapped from PC. I am using the camera included cable with the Ceremonic SR-C2003 and that's what you're hearing. That's the audio that's coming right there. That's going to be on this footage. Now if you really want to and if you're really bored, you could try this kind of for singing. I'm not a great singer, so please don't judge me. This is Eric coming to you from not by studio and if you want to sing with this microphone it's your choice i'll be using the open camera app with my android mobile phone and using a ceremonic specific adapter we are now listening to my mobile phone audio using the smartphone adapter cable as well as the USB adapter from ESR. How am I coming through using that particular connection type? Oh, and I don't think the volume is quite as loud as it is with, yeah.
The audio you're hearing now is through my mobile phone using the Ceramonic SR-C 2003 cable with that uh, camera type cable, the auxiliary one. How am I coming through? Got lots of volume. I actually had to turn my volume down because it was so loud. But uh, yeah, this actually works really good. This is the configuration I would definitely recommend to mobile phone or PC. How am I coming through? When it comes to different adapter cables, the situation using the smartphone cable is very much a hit or miss situation. That is why I recommend the cables from Ceramonic to use with this device. And do not use this ESR cable to PC unless you want a dead useless cable. Right now we're hearing the audio from the built-in microphone. I always recommend using the little firm off outside. In fact, I even recommend using it inside because it cleans up your audio. It does plosive the microphone really, really easy if you have no cover over top. So firm off, no matter inside or outside, definitely 100% recommended. Now in terms of wind noise, we're gonna to get to a breezer area as I go uphill and how am I coming through? And just out of curiosity, let's listen to outside to hear how much sound we hear around us. I hear some birds chirping. And in terms of if noise, hiss is an issue at all. Car passed there just a moment ago. And I don't know if we can hear the birds or not, or how much sound is picked up at this moment in time. This is my first time using the built-in mic outside recording. One thing I'd like to point out is the audio for sounds around you, it doesn't pick up overly loud, which is actually good because it concentrates the audio on close spoken word over the idea of everything. Like the DJI mic per se records nature better, but the problem is a DJI mic picks up everything. Well, this one is actually a nice one for picking you up versus everything around you. Just for the fun of it, I'm gonna go from one side of the building and right around the building and see if we can even hear me going around one side to other. Let's do this quick fun test. And if you're wondering, I do have waterproof shoes on. These are Tropic Fill geyser shoes, making sure I test them sufficiently as I do a review on those particular shoes. And let's see if you can hear me. I'm actually facing the wrong way towards, not towards the camera, as you can hear, it's on my chest right now. So. This breeze. So now I'm approaching close back to the camera. Can you hear me? I don't know. And I am almost in view. And you should be able to hear me and see me. So how did I come through? Right now we are at 15 feet, 4.5 meters. I'll do a turn around and see if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Mic test, mic test. And let's keep going. And at the point of 25 feet, 7.5 meters, this is about as far as you normally go away from a camera. But we're gonna do a turn around like such. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? So the point of this test, of course, is to block my microphone that is right on my side, right down here, to see if there's still reception when facing away from the camera. Now we are 50 feet. 15 meters away. Can you hear me? 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 Let's keep going and see if you can still hear me at this distance away. And we are now at 75 feet away, 15, sorry, 25 meters. Can you hear me? 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 So at this point, it's getting kind of ridiculous for distance wise. I am zoomed up on my camera to get a better view of where I am. We are now 100 feet, 30 meters away. And let's do a turn around. Can you hear me? 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 At this point, the road wireless go will start to lose some reliability, especially when turning around. And uh, we're gonna see how this compares. We are now 125 feet, 37.5 meters away. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me still? And let's keep going. And we are now approaching our next marker which I don't have the meters distance for this. And this is 150 feet and 
plus 7.5 meters, whatever the last one was. Let's do a turnaround. Can you hear me? 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 And let's keep going. We are approaching our next one, which is 175 feet, 52.5 meters. This is where the DJI mic was about the point where it start to cut out here. And let's do a turnaround. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? So this again is 175 feet, 52.5 meters. Let's keep going. And we are approaching our next one. And our next marker is 200 feet, 60 meters away. Let's do a turnaround. Can you hear me? 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 And of course, at this distance, it's ridiculous to even do a turnaround test. Let's keep going straight back and see if you can still hear me. We are now 125, sorry, 225 feet, 67.5 meters away. Oh, and uh, keep it, so I'm now gonna move phone a bit higher. To keep some form of consistency to how I test most of my microphones, I'm gonna keep it up here. So I'm not cutting out earlier than I should be. And uh, now at 325 feet, 97.5 meters away, and generally, as long as your mic is close to your receiver in terms of height, or if you're going downhill, you generally get better reception than if you have your, uh, than if you're going uphill. If you're going uphill from your receiver, you tend to cut out sooner. So downhill is the way to go. Now 350 feet or 105 meters we're at, and let's keep going. And of course, if you're on a straight plane, that should work just as well, even probably better than going downhill. 375 feet, 112.5 meters. And let's just quickly go behind this pole and see what happens. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, so behind this pole. Gonna approach our next marker. Let's see what happens. We are getting there. We are now at 400 feet, 120 meters away. Let's keep going to my last marker before I had way down the cell and you won't hear me or see me anymore. At least if you hear me, you won't be able to see me. So as far as our screen goes, it's not overly bright. You're not going to really see it in the sunlight much. But as soon as you go in the sun, we definitely won't see it. So you might want to set your screen first before you go in the sun. Because, yeah, you're probably not going to see it if you're facing the sun. As you can see, we're now less than two minutes away from nine hours of testing on battery. Lights on the entire time. If I turn these lights off, just imagine how insanely long this battery life would be probably well over 12 hours, but uh, yeah, this is crazy. Now the self noise is not really what I like for in a studio environment, but outside you're not gonna notice that. Really superb. And with wired lavaliers, especially beyond the included one, this has great audio. On the topic of audio and self noise, right now our mic's at four out of six. I'm using the included lavalier with this device. And our self noise is actually quite acceptable for a studio environment. One question you may have in your mind is get this or the DJI mic. Well, other than the DJI mic, I believe costing more than this, it picks up absolutely every sound. In a studio environment, at least, I'd recommend this over the DJI mic because any little cough, sneeze, fan noise, every little tiny sound that you can barely hear is gonna be picked up in the DJI mic, ruining your video because it picks up everything. Now, if you wanna pick up every sound around you and your nature, the DJI mic and the reception distance is more dependable on the DJI mic and the screen faces you on the monitor. Well, this one is like the Rode Wireless Go that the screen faces up. Now, when it comes to the Rode Wireless Go or this, both are about the same when it comes to reception dependability, I find. This gives you better value, you get a lavalier included, you get a charging case included compared to the Rode Wireless Go. The only advantage it really has over this is that it has internal recording. Of course, other than the value option of getting more for your money, between the Rode Wireless Go and this in a student environment, the Rode Wireless Go actually has really low self noise. And if you're planning to use the built-in microphone, you'll probably be better served with the Rode Wireless Go that way. So I'm not trying to favor anything, but the battery life on this, this has better battery life that lasts longer and take you more through the day, especially if you turn off that screen. 10 hours, 
versus the Rode Wireless Go, seven hours, versus the DJI mic, six hours, tested in my review video. And if I turn off the lights off of this, I literally might be able to get 12 hours, but I wasn't ready to sit around for 12 hours to find out. It's already insane. The DJI mic may have internal recording, but there's still hiss in that internal recording. So the self noise is the same, both options. And that's what ruined that particular system for me. I paid for this myself. This is not a sponsored review, but most sponsored reviews, you never hear them testing the silence in a studio. Now, do you? This is Eric of Not Bio Studio. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day. If you're looking for a more affordable option, there are many different microphones reviewed here, but also this one to be reviewed, another one from Kimafun, another one from Lensco. So there's many different microphones coming here to be reviewed. Don't forget to comment so I can give you the best advice possible for your situation.